My parents' bum dream, crushed by Putin. My story. This is what we're gonna talk about today. And also we're gonna talk about this man, American singer Dean Reed, so-called Red Elvis, who actually visited BAM. Uh, BAM is the Baikal Amur main line. It's a railroad. And this is where Severomuski Tunnel is located, which was, uh, there were, there was blow up in there recently because of the war. And this would be the theme of our video. We will talk about how young people from all 15 republics from the former USSR build the, the railroad nowhere in Siberia, how I grew up there and what happening to it today. Let's go. Hello everyone, I'm Elina. Welcome back to my channel. Enough of propaganda. Please like, subscribe, share, write comments. Let's make truth available for everyone. This is what helps to promote it on YouTube. Thank you. So let's talk about the Baikal Amur main line. Uh, in Russia, people know what it is about. It was considered the construction of a century, where the young people were attracted to go by high salaries, by perks like you can stay in line for years and pay money ahead and then you will be able to buy a car. Because in the Soviet Union, even if you would have, have money, which many people wouldn't, you can just go to the store and buy a car to the dealership or whatever. You have to, there was not enough cars and at the time people went there. Some people went there because they like my parents, they lived in a commune flat and there was not enough space for all of us. And we just had to stay in line for decades to get a bigger apartment. So we went to, to construct that main, uh, that main line. Uh, first my father went there because there was no roads at all. He has to fly there by helicopter ahead of us, leave in tents. And by the time they built first temporary buildings, me and my mom could come. We flew there by helicopter, like in the future, uh, American singer and actor Dean Reed would come on the helicopter. Here's the map of BAM. So all that, e it was western part of BAM and eastern part. So eastern part, where the Komsomolsk on Amur and so on, was constructed by military, by so-called engineering, kind of like engineering forces, but basically slaves. Only in the army, not in the prison. And before that, lots of stuff constructed around Tinda, for example, the capital of BAM, basically, by prisoners. We lived there for a lot of years. My family, basically 20 years. I, I lived there less because I had to go to university and I moved away after I graduated from school. But I came there as a child and we flew by helicopter. And then my family was building BAM. My parents, my grandparents. And uh, it was harsh climate. I loved Siberia and I still love Siberia. But it was over sometimes minus 42, minus 45 Celsius in winter. And in summer it actually was quite hot. It was, it was kind of sharp continental cl climate. But it was harsh environment. And not everybody likes to live there. My poor mom, for example, preferred to live in a flat in the Black, at the Black Sea coast. And sometimes she was saying, if I would have been a criminal who killed somebody, and I would have been charged to go to jail and to Siberia. Now, since 15 years passed here, I would have been released. But now, since I'm not a criminal and I'm here voluntarily, basically she was meaning, uh, I have to live here still longer. Then criminal who would have murdered somebody would be released by now and be free. And I'm still in Siberia. Eventually, by the end of the stay in Siberia, she learned to like it, and I guess. As Russian is saying sometimes, you can get used to even a noose on your neck if you have it long enough. I guess that's what it was. So, and every two years we had free tickets and we hop on the train and go all across, all across Russia to the European part of Russia, to the Black Sea coast, to our apartment, stay there for paid vacation for two months and then go back. What my teachers in Soviet school failed to tell me that apparently uh, the construction of BAM wasn't started in 1974 when my parents came, well, my father came, 
and a year later only me and my mom could come and we had to be approved by the chiefs of this of his company that we can come and my family still keeping as a keepsake the telegram which we received that we allowed to come to see our father uh, my father and my mom's husband and that's how it all was but my teachers failed to tell that bum didn't start in 1974 it started in 1937 during stalin time when he sent prisoners to build that railroad slaves russian slaves who died there building that railroad way before it became popular in so-called Komsomol or Young Communist League construction and glorious thing to do. When the construction of the western part of BAM, where my parents were, was finished and the first train came to our railroad, the first train came, uh, so always came American, the first American I have ever seen, American singer and actor Dean Reed. On some competitions, uh, singing competitions, he even won from Elvis Presley in the past. And that's why he was called Red Elvis. Uh, the poor guy who was thinking that he believed in revolution and loved Soviet people. And we loved him back. He was absolutely different from Soviet stiff uh, singers who would stay in front of the microphone in a suit and tie and don't even move or making any gestures or anything. Dean Reed was smiley, friendly. He was walking on, on his upside down on his hands on the stage and Russians never seen that before. He burned the whole audience just like a spark. Everybody loved him instantaneously. And despite of his faults and maybe misunderstandings and believing in something he shouldn't have believed, he single-handedly single broke down Soviet Union basically because Russians saw American, friendly American, and they understood that America doesn't want to kill us. Just because Dean Reed came. That's what I think of him. And I was deeply upset when he died. Under mysterious circumstances. Most likely eliminated by the KGB. Who knows. It was presented as a suicide. Which could have happened when he realized how much he was lied to. How much he was deceived. And then he spent his life defending evil things. Unfortunately. But Dean Reed was brave. He was traveling and singing on the top of the moving train. He was uh, driving on the top of Magiru's car. At the time, Germany provided um, something like 9,500 Magiru's trucks, which uh, engine could work even in minus 57 weather. And Dean Reed traveled on top of the moving trains and on top of Magiru's drove on it and... Uh, he was amazing. He was brave. He was friendly. And his smile won the hearts of people in the USSR. And this is how our area looks like. And this is Dean Reed. He flew there, flew there by helicopter just like we did. And eventually he came by first, very first train on the fresh railroad my family built. So what was BAM? BAM in numbers. 130,000 people of 108 nationalities, 4,242 bridges, and that's another amazing statistics. These are young people who build BAM. This is how my parents will look like when they were young and when they were constructing BAM. About 70% of people were below 30, 30 years old who were constructing BAM. 12,843.2 kilometers of railways. And this is talking about Magiros and tractors were supplied. 63 new settlements were founded during the construction of BAM, three of which were new cities, Severobaikalsk, Tinda and Fevralsk. And this was the Severomuski Tunnel, the longest and most difficult construction, 15,343 meters. We will talk about it a little bit longer, a little bit later. In the north of Buryatia, it was constructed and now it's a main road providing Russia with military support from China for Putin's illegal and aggressive war in Ukraine. In 1991 prices, the total cost of construction of the bomb was 17.7 billion Soviet rubles. 
which according to Igor Gaidar was four times the originally planned cost. And now let's see how much it's really cost. Bum. One meter, one human life. This is what bum actually cost. In Stalin times, they sent to bum basically people who created that horrible Belamor channel, which lots of people, lots of prisoners died. The whole point of Stalin Gulag was apparently not just get rid of people who maybe disagree with Stalin or anything. No. It was to build things. To use slave labor of the prisoners to construct things. Because USSR wasn't efficient, wasn't prosperous. It has to use slave labor to, in its attempt to pretend that everything is good. That they're trying to compete with the USA and so on. For example, in 1951, USSR minister of internal affairs, Kruglov, reported at the meeting. I must say that in a number of sectors of the national economy, the minister of internal affairs occupies a monopoly position. For example, the gold mining industry, it's all concentrated in our country, in our uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The production of diamonds, silver, platinum, all this is entirely concentrated in the Ministry of Internal Affairs. Mining of asbestos and apatite is entirely carried out by the Ministry of Internal Affairs. We are 100% involved in the production of tin. 80% of the share is occupied by the Ministry of Internal Affairs for non-ferrous metals. The minister didn't mention only one thing. 100% of radium in the country was also produced by prisoners. So people who in Soviet opinion committed even worse crimes, they were sent to, to like uranium mines and so on, and some other radioactive mines to die, basically. It was a form of execution. And 100% of radium was also produced by prisoners, as I said. And that great Komsomol project, Young Communist project, BAM. There were songs composed about it, where my parents worked, films made, and some enthusiastic articles. It didn't start it in 1974. It was started with Stalin prisoners' camps. And according to Jacques Rossi's handbook of the Gulag, one of this most objective book at the moment about the camp systems, about 50,000 prisoners worked at BAM in 1950s. So basically, the death of those prisoners was often happening. They were cold. They were basically uh, eating a loaf of bread a day and a soup made out of frozen fish. And that's about it. They had scurvy and had to chew pine needles, which actually we did too. I remember in childhood chewing pine needles and pine uh, sap. And every meter of the bum is paid by one human life. But official story of construction of bum, which I learned in Soviet school when I was there. Uh, and we do have prisoners camp. We did have prisoners camps at the time around us, but a bit far away from where I was. But we did have people working in the... Uh, uh, it was military. There was Russian uh, military forces working on the construction of BAM. I'll show you in a minute. Uh, the old projects like in Tsarist Russia, in Soviet Russia, all those constructions, especially railroads, cost a lot of human life. Famous Russian poet Nikrasov wrote, and on the sides, all the bones are Russian. How many are there, Vanichka? Do you know? It's the poetry about a boy, Vanichka, traveling by train, and his uh, older relative saying that lots of people died constructing the railroad they traveling on. I would say that um, a Russian article about Severomusky tunnel is much better, and I will show it more. Uh, this is the tunnel where the train blew up recently. It's the longest tunnel, railroad tunnel. In BAM. 
15,343 meters long. It's basically uh, chopped the time from 2 hours to 25 minutes. From 57 kilometers to 23 kilometers. Now people can travel through that tunnel. Could before that blow up. Before the tunnel was constructed, there was some sort of a road going around it, which was very long, as I said, 57 kilometers, and it was very steep and very difficult. But there was no another way going through that Severomuski range, the tunnel named after mountain range. And this was the only way until the tunnel was finally constructed. Even it was constructed after the bomb was finished officially. And it was opened in 2001 and only started to operate in 2003. The tunnel was very difficult to build. It's not because it's long. It's because several things were very, very difficult. There was four tectonic faults there, ranging from five to 900 meters wide. And there was hot water there, thermal waters, and quicksands in the granites, and uh, overstressed state of rocks, and increased seismicity, and worst of all was high concentration of radioactive gas radon. And radiation sta safety wasn't good and people get overexposure and so on. And of course, Severomuski tunnel also built on the bonds of Russian people. Uh, Soviet people, I would say, not Russian people, because BAM was built by all 15 republics of the USSR, and different stations of BAM was named after the, and constructed by different republics. Station Nia was built by Georgia, and several other stations built by Belarus, by Kazakhstan, and so on. And so this is how the tunnel looked like. And of, of course, people died there too, 57 people. One accident brought, uh, killed 31 people, 31 person. And now, after the blow up of the train in the tunnel, it probably wouldn't be use even usable. Putin brought the war to Russia, started aggressive war in Ukraine, and now it came to Russia. And not just to some places on the border, it came to even Siberia. It destroyed everything these people, my parents, my grandparents, worked for. It destroyed what all the people who died there worked for. BAM originally was supposed to be a road to get to the different parts of Russia and discover new uh, minerals, uh, coal, and so on. And it suppo was supposed to be the road. But mostly, I think it was because of military purposes and because of China and the relationship with China at the time was not so good and they would need to get access for the army in case of something happened, perhaps. And after it was finished, years later, it was said to my parents and to other people who built it, oh, it's a road to nowhere, nobody need bomb. It wasn't interesting. And now all of a sudden, because of the war, it started to be necessary again. And Russia, it's a road to China, going through that part of Russia called Buryatia, which is native people, Buryat lives, conquered by Russia in the past. And now, all the work of these people destroyed. And this is not all. Another explosion happened on the, those, uh, another alternative route. And the uh, Chortov Bridge, uh, or uh, Devil's Bridge. And this is Devil's Bridge. Another train was blown up on that bridge. So another route is kind of destroyed too. And now, the tunnel might never work again. And all the work of people, who was peaceful people, constructing something good, it all was destroyed. Don't take me wrong. The most important part is that Ukrainian people are dying, killed by Putin in his aggressive war. They have nothing to do with any of this. And they were constructing BAM as well as everybody else from the USSR. It's their work as well. And now it's all destroyed. Putin brought war. Not only to Ukraine or Russia, he wants to bring war to many other countries. Putin must be stopped. Down with Putin. Please help Ukraine. And please, Russian people, I'm also talking to Russian people, and I hope that they will finally stand up against Putin.
because Putin brought Stalin times in my country, Russia. Right now, I just got information that the gulags probably would be reopened again because Putin has mentioned that, oh, we're not going to do mass repression. We will do a, a dot pinpoint repressions, which would be so big that they will become mass repressions. And he said in a kind of, in a half tone of voice just to person nearby saying that, yeah, yeah, we're not going to do mass repressions. We just do a little bit. So these gulags will probably will be reopened again. Welcome to Gulag. That's what Russian people, if they wanted it, here they are. And the worst part of, I just heard on some uh, some Russian uh, factory or plant of some sort, people get a meeting and they wanted Putin to tighten the law and make it even more harsh on so-called foreign agents. This is basically Stalin times, when people on the factories were forced to go in the room and vote kill the Stalin enemies Kamenev and Zinoviev and some other people because they are spies for other countries and so on. Russians didn't learn anything from their history and they're repeating it right now. I am deeply sad and I am upset that my family's legacy getting destroyed because of Putin's imperial ambitions, bloodthirst and stupidity. Putin must be stopped. Please help Ukraine. It will in the end help Russian people as well. Freedom to Russian people from Putin. Thank you for watching. Please learn the truth and stay informed. See you later.